Hello and welcome this week to Cedar Creek Homestead. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Got me a good old glass of iced tea this evening out here. It's uh, really hot and uh, uh, the weather, uh, we're only in the low 90s here today, but the humidity's bad. And uh, this has been a hot old day. I have sweated and sweated and I've come in and after work and I've changed on changed clothes put on some more work clothes fixing to go out here on the homestead and do some uh, uh, little things that need to be done before it gets dark but I thought I'd uh, do another uh, porch time video and I uh, want to say uh, thank you to all of you who have been subscribing to our channel um, our subscriptions have really been up and we certainly appreciate you also, there's more folks that are commenting, and I really think there's kind of a move movement uh, in the homesteading in that particular area. Um, I think people are getting concerned, but and that brings me to the subject of today's porch time, and that is: is there a food shortage? And um, I've been investigating this and checking it out the best that I can, and. Um, I'm going to tell you what's going on. Whoops, my camera got bumped. I'm going to tell you what's going on right here at Cedar Creek Homestead in our area, this part of Oklahoma, eastern Oklahoma. As you well know, I've shared this several times. We have had floods. It has knocked out a lot of the spring crops, big crops. I'm talking about folks that maybe grow uh, patch, uh, truck patching, and stuff like that. And I have a friend that uh, has got a watermelon patch, and he has uh, hauled out nine pickup loads of w watermelons out of his watermelon patch. Uh, out of about a three-acre patch, they've hauled out nine loads. So they have done wonderful. There was a while that they couldn't even get to the watermelon patch because all the highways was blocked all the way around. But now they're doing well, and they sell them along the roads and stuff around here for extra money, but they've done well with that. But most of the farmers around here have not fared so well. The big farmers, I'm talking about folks that use the combines and that stuff, have suffered because their land was down here on the river bottoms. So, for instance, and this goes back, is there a food shortage? Well, down here on our river, they uh, grow sweet corn every spring and you can go and buy locally there's a family here that has done it for years all that I can remember they've sold sweet corn and they have field corn they grow soybeans all kinds of other crops and they're big into it but their one little thing that they do is they love to grow sweet corn and it's been handed down from generation to generation and they sell it every year this year they harvested enough sweet corn that they were able to sell down here in our town for one day now some there's others that have had a little bit and sold around locally but nothing i mean usually for days they'll have sweet corn and they'll harvest it uh once a day and they uh, they have a machine that harvests the sweet corn, and uh, but they have kids uh, like school age kids that come and help and go through it, and they put it in a big wagon and bring it over either by tractor or by pickup. Some people come from all over to buy corn. Then they sell it. There's there's truck patch gardener type people. I don't know what you would call them, but roadside guys. You know that sell. They'll sell this same corn. Uh, all over the area you'll see it uh, miles away from here and it'll have this family's name on. I'm not using their name because they don't know I'm doing a video about them but they've been so faithful to do this for years and the uh, elder of the family is getting on up in years and stuff and uh, he uh, actually uh, a few years ago offered to give me a coffee can of seed corn uh, for the sweet corn. He said, I'll give you a can of that and you can grow your own. And I said, well, it's easier just to buy the corn from you guys and get it. But this year, because of the floods, they were able to sell one day they sold corn. And I believe they were out by noon. I, did, I seen them there that morning and later in the day they were gone. So I don't even think they had a half a day's worth of corn 
there. I've seen a pickup there with a bed of it with corn. So things uh, have been bad. And around here, Allen's Canning, you may have heard of them. They do the Popeye spinach. They used to grow a lot of crops around here, like green beans and uh, stuff like that, and spinach and whatever. And I have not seen them around here. I don't know if they're still in business or if it was because of the weather they didn't grow. But there appears to be some of the canned goods a shortage. Now, I think, this is my own personal opinion, but it was something that started even before the flooding. You know, all up the Mississippi, up the Missouri River, the Arkansas River here, the Verdigris, we've had massive flooding. All of our lakes have been up, so it's all getting back to normal now, and the farmers have planted corn and soybeans and other crops. A bunch of corn been planted around here, and it's up, uh, uh, some of it now probably shoulder height, so they're going to have a corn harvest. Now, what the farmers are telling me, that have planted corn that they used to get one crop of corn and then they'll have a crop of soybeans or wheat something like that they'll, they'll switch it around and they're saying this year they're probably going to get one crop of corn and it could be that the corn will be late harvested more later than normal and so they have dryers these big gas dryer things that they put the corn in to dry it on down because they may have to harvest it before it is to the moisture level that they want so uh, they have equipment for that and they've done it before now they don't want to do it because price of corn is not where they want it to be most are hoping by fall there'll be a shortage when it really starts coming on and the price will start going up and going up and that'll help them but nonetheless, that corn that's being grown doesn't really affect what you're getting in the store. So, you know, the field corn is what they're going to feed the pigs and cattle and chickens and stuff like that. And there is, so far, a big reserve of that still left. And so in soybeans especially, they'll probably grind a lot of that up into feed for pigs. And they already do anyway, but a lot more into feed for cattle and chickens and things because there's a shortage. So uh, anyway, um, because not of the shortage, but because China's not buying the soybeans. So as far as the shortest thing, I really believe in my heart that it was something that started last year. And I'm not sure what caused it, but that because canned goods, you know, oftentimes are canned way in advance. You know, they may have been canned a year ago, corn and green beans and stuff. So I just don't think, I feel like this shortage of spring was not... Uh, I believe it was something that happened back, but the floods have escalated the shortage. Now, does that mean you're going to starve to death? No. I looked in our stores and the frozen vegetables, green beans, corn, carrots, there was lots of that. And fresh in our stores of carrots and um, they had pretty good little supply of corn. I don't know where it come from, probably Mexico or somewhere. So uh, there's people around here that haven't... Uh, like they do uh, canning, but they grow, get their stuff from a uh, uh, grower somewhere. And people that can green beans around here say the people they usually get their green beans from didn't have a good crop because of all the rain and stuff. They just didn't get a good crop. So they have replanted. Now they tell me now, here it is the 1st of August, and they say they're, they're picking green beans and they're getting a big harvest. So a lot of people are canning green beans. It's just later than normal. Uh, so whether we're truly in a food shortage, I would say more of a food concern. And because this is what we've been talking about. When the homesteaders and uh, prepper, prepper movement, the homesteading to me is a way of life. Prepping is even a way of life. Some people can't grow gardens and stuff, so they stock back stuff. Now, some panic. So you say, well, there's a shortage of canned goods, and Walmart puts a sign up somewhere that says they're running out. Well, people run to all the other Walmarts. They put it on social media, and people start panicking and buying all the food. We try to have enough canned goods put back. I'll just tell you how we do it to last us a year. We try to have enough uh, canned tomatoes, and we, my wife does most of that here. 
salsa, pickles, like this year, she's got enough pickles to last an entire year. Some people will do two years worth. Now, this year we didn't do very good with green beans. They just didn't make like usual. We've had an abundance of cucumbers. We've had an abundance of squash. Our tomatoes have been poor, but our green beans, sure enough, didn't do worth nothing. Okra didn't do anything. So my wife has actually bought some cans of, of green beans, and she's also bought some corn because our local corn supply wasn't available. So she has bought more, but we haven't hoarded it up. We have enough cans of that type of stuff that would last us a year. And I, we got some carrots put back. We buy store-bought canned carrots. Now, my wife likes to can carrots, and we've still got carrots left over from last year. We've still got a few jars of green beans last year left over from last year beets and stuff like that and she's canned beets this year we had a good beet crop so she's uh, but some things we ran short on so we buy them from the store when we do and we stock up enough we try to come into the winter to the fall that we have our propane tanks filled we have our pantries filled and we're ready to go and we could make it for an entire year if we had to I'm not saying we would never have to go to the store, but we we could if a bad thing happened. So that's with Homestead, and it's just a way of life with us, the way folks used to. Now there's preppers that, on the other hand, they can't grow a garden grow any of their food, so they prep everything back and freeze-dried foods or whatever. But we've been preaching this and telling folks there's a day coming. And the Bible says that there'd come a day when there'd be earthquakes and famines and pestilences in diverse places. To me, uh, there's even a place in Revelations that says that would be basically when you convert it to that day's wages that it would have cost a whole day's wage to buy one loaf of bread. Now look how high bread is. We used to go buy like four or five loaves for a dollar and now a good loaf of bread will run you two bucks or more and if you get something that's really high quality it might run you four or five dollars for one loaf of bread. Now you think about it, uh, things are changing in, in that area. So I just want to bring this out today that I think there's a time of concern, not to be panicked or scared. Now I'm going to give you an example. A few years ago, 22 shells you couldn't hardly get around here. If they put them out on the shell, shelf, 22 rifle shells, long rifle, people would just snatch them up and about all the ammo they were doing it to but the 22 ammo got very hard to get now I never ran out I always had I've always kept extra 22 ammo but when it got that way I was like hey I'll just use what I got I got some put back no big deal but they tell me at the local Walmarts and stuff like that uh, the people would know the day they got their delivery and come in and buy up all their ammo and a lot of the stores started saying you could only get one box of ammo per day. Well, people would have their families come in and buy. And there's people around here that had a whole entire room set aside for ammo and thousands and thousands of rounds of 22 ammo. You'll never use that much 22 ammo. But they panicked and they went crazy. And that sadly is what happens a lot of times. And so they there could have been a food shortage a little bit and then people through this media the social media I'm talking about what we're doing right here started talking about it and people panicked I personally believe you ought to have up enough food by fall every year that you could live on it through the winter if you need to put up butcher a hog butcher your chickens do whatever so that during the winter because winter is a typically a time that people have more financial hardships you have Christmas that comes on. When I was a kid, when we experienced the worst hardships financially was in the wintertime. My dad's family was the same way. Now, it seems like we've gotten immune to that in our modern society, but I still prepare like my grandparents did and like their grandparents did. We put up enough food for the animals for the winter. We put up enough uh, things, whether we have to buy it or, pre and, or pre and prep it back or whether we have to produce it ourselves. But if you try to do it after the fact, after all the panic and urge is on, then you have trouble. So uh, I'm just going to encourage you today uh, to pray about it. A lot of folks, back several years ago, 
uh, we felt probably 15 years ago, maybe 20, the Lord dealing with us. I've always gardened and, and we've canned. Me and my wife have been married this year. will make 26 years. We've always canned and we put stuff back. But about 15 years or more, we felt led. Oh, and I felt it of the Lord to start putting things back and start doing what I, what we call in homesteading. I never even knew what homestead meant until the last few years ago when I started watching folks on YouTube that was calling themselves homesteaders or modern homesteaders. And then I got into to watching the prep and stuff and I was like, we've already been doing that. We didn't even know there's a movement going on. Now I realize there's a movement, but I talked to a lot of people who feel like they've been led of the Lord to prep and to homestead. So uh, if that's something you have felt, now we've had ridicule because folks that think we're nuts because of what we're doing. We felt also we need to get out of debt. Hey, and I know a lot of folks that's felt that way. If the God's telling you, you better do what God's told you. And uh, I don't know what's ahead, but I've had Christian friends that I really think of true friends that ridicule us and they think there's nothing in and we shouldn't be doing this. And now a lot of them are starting. I just do my own thing. I put my YouTube videos on. I, if somebody wants to talk about it, I'll sure talk about them. We had a young man started coming to our church. And he was very concerned. And he had gotten saved and stuff. And he said, I feel the Lord tell me that we need to start to preparing and putting back food and learning how to garden. I've already been gardening all my life, so learning how to garden wasn't a big thing, but to him, he'd never gardened, and so he wanted to learn, and I encouraged him. I said, if the Lord's telling you that, you better get in and do what God's told you to do. But anyhow, uh, I love it. I love getting out and raising my own food. I love working in the garden. I love seeing the hand of God bless me and my family in what we're doing. He blesses the works of of our hands and so I certainly appreciate what God's doing he's been mighty good to me and I always want to do his will but nonetheless whatever reason you've got wherever you're doing your thing if you feel led to do it you probably ought to be doing what you let some folks aren't hey that's their business you don't have to do what I'm doing I'm not doing what they're doing they don't have to do what I'm doing I'm doing my own thing and I'm loving it I love this lifestyle. In fact, we've gotten more into the homesteading as we've evolved. I still have to work out and I have to do things, but we do a lot of things the old-fashioned way, the old-timey way. Uh, one of the things we love to just sit on our porch here, and uh, we got rocking chairs out here, and we just rock the time away, and we have a wonderful time in what we're doing. We're blessed. Whether you whether there's a food shortage or not, folks, I don't know. There's people panicking, saying that hay for your cattle is going to run low. We have an abundant hay crop this year. It's been a little late getting it cut because of all the rain, but it's coming on. There's going to be a second cutting here. Uh, we've uh, went a long ways to my goal for hay this year. And in fact, if I had to stop right now and couldn't buy no more hay, I believe I could make it because I had to buy my hay. But the guy who supplies it, he's doing wonderful. I've checked around early in the spring to see if there was other places to buy hay because some was telling me the hay was going to be like $200 a round bell. There's people on YouTube saying that. It's not around here. In fact, there's advertisements on Craigslist and guys as low as $20 and $25 a bell. They're trying to get rid of it. So there's an abundance of hay. Now, I think you should buy up your hay now. Don't wait till middle of the winter and then buy it who knows then but right now and I also think we could have a little more colder winter just from uh, news things that I have watched and Noah and stuff like that I just uh, uh, there's a guy on YouTube I can't tell you I, I wish I could think of his name that does a little thing and he believes it's going to be a little colder not a blizzard but where we are it's going to be a little bit colder and maybe a little more moisture so last year I barely had enough hay to make it so I'm thinking, hey, if we had a colder winter and more moisture with snow on the ground, the cows wouldn't be able to eat the leftover grass. So maybe I ought to put a little extra hay. And last year I even felt like I needed to do that, and I wanted to get uh, an extra 100 bells, but I probably only got like extra 20 bells put back. So this year my goal is to hit that 100, so I have roughly 100 bells. If I need them, fine. If I don't, I'll carry them over to the next year. It's not a big deal. But I'd rather have plenty to feed my animals. I don't like them to starve and go through a rough time. 
Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Hey, I got way we appreciate you watching today and may God richly bless you. We'll see you next week here on Porch Time. We're gone.